In this section, we're going to talk about what is called function notation. What we have been dealing with in the past are equations that are possibly functions or not functions. So this equation, y equals 2x plus 3, is a linear function. We know that from our prior lessons in this chapter. But we have this written as an equation. Um, to denote that this is a function, we're going to give this function a name. Um, names of functions that we typically use are just single letters because that way we can save writing stuff. So we can call it F, we can call it G. Um, later on in your high school math career, you're going to learn about other functions that have names and that would be like the sine function, the cosine function, the logarithm function. So they have names. The notation we use would be the name with parentheses and the independent variable. For example, I can do f of x, I can do g of x, I can do sine of theta. This is just telling me what the variable is in there. So if I take the original equation that I had and use it in function notation, I would get something that looks like this. f of x equals 2x plus 3. <clears throat> so this is telling us that, hey, if you notice my original equation is y equals 2x plus 3. If I write it in function notation, it tells me f of x equals 2x plus 3. 2x plus 3s are the same, therefore f of x is just the y value of the function. Where whatever is inside the parentheses is going to be my x value. For example, if I were to do f of 1, what that is telling me to do is to copy down the original function, Copy original, except where variable is, you put parentheses. That's going to be my first step. And I'm going to do this one in the purple. So I'm going to put parentheses where the x is. And then step two is to put um, the input into the parentheses. So there's my input. I'm going to put the one in the parentheses. And then we are going to evaluate it. So f of 1 is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. Then I get 2 plus 3, which is 5. So if you see f of 1, that just means put 1 in for every single x. If you see f of 4, that means put a 4 in for every single x. I'm going to do another example on paper, then we're going to go through the IXL practice that you have. I'm going to call this function g of x. That is equal to negative 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. I want to know what uh, g of 2 is. So remember, our step one is to copy the original equation, except where there's an x put parentheses. In this case, I have more than one x. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put my input value. 
then I'm going to evaluate it following the order of operations. So negative four, I'm not gonna do anything here yet because I have two squared. So I have negative four times two squared is four. Two times two is four. Okay, multiplication happens next. Um, negative four times four is negative 16. Four minus five is negative one. Negative 16 minus one is negative 17. So that is the gist of it. Um, a quick review. Um, is that, hey, biggest thing is just to realize that I can write it in function notation. I can write it as an equation. I'm still going to be doing the exact same work for these. So let's go over to your IXL. Um, I'll zoom in in a second. Um, we have three of these. And I will, let's zoom in. So first one is evaluating linear functions from graph word problems. And we'll try to get, I have to zoom out. There we go. I'm going to bring my keyboard over. So I am going to do one of each level of each of these things. Um, you cannot jump levels. I can. I just want to make sure that you can see all of the different types in here. Does this graph shows the total cost of visiting the science museum as a member related to the number of visits? So they give you a graph. What is the maximum number of visits the Science Museum can make for a total of $10? So I go for 10 on the dollars. I go over and it intersects at one so I can do one visit. Do another one here. This graph shows how the amount of money left to raise is related to the number of cakes she sells. How many cakes does she need to sell in order to have just $600 left? I go 600. I go over to where it intersects the graph, then I come down and I get 60. I click Submit. So those are my level one type questions. I'm gonna to jump to the next level. This graph shows the length of Claire's SA depends on the number of hours she spends writing in the week. How many hours will she have to spend writing in order to have written a total of two pages? So two pages, It looks like about one and a half hours. Okay, so level two question. And the last level here is three. This graph shows how the number of items remaining depends on the number of items sold. After seven are sold in, from the bargain bin, how many items are left? Okay, well, how many total items were in the bin? There were 10. If she sells seven, how many are left? there are going to be three. So she sells seven, there are three items remaining. So that's that first um, IXL. The next IXL is interpret functions using everyday language. So in a physics class, the students found that it takes a force of f of x newtons to accelerate a wagon that weighs x pounds. Okay, so x pounds, that means there's eight pounds, will have a force of 25 newtons. Okay, eight pound wagon, 25 newtons. I'll do one more of the bit level ones. Quincy's family got a new printer. f of x gives us the number of pages in x seconds. So in 60 seconds, I get 30 pages. 30 pages in 60 seconds. Go to a level two question. Workers at Alamode Ice Cream Parlor hand churn batches of ice cream and put them in the freezer. The temperature of the ice cream X hours after a batch is put in the freezer is F of X. 
Temperature is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. What does F of 6 equals F of 7 tells me? That means the temperature at 6 hours is the same as the temperature at 8 hours. I mean 7 hours. Okay. And now a level 3 question. Uh, let's do another one of these. Element ice cream function F of X to calculate profits for X cones. When I sell 50 cones, I have $85 profit. $85 for 50 cones. And now a level 3 question. An automobile tracks the number of cars it produces. F of X is the total number of cars produced in the first X days. So F of 2, after 2 days, I've made more than 5,000 cars. Um, as of January 2nd, has produced more than 5,000 cars. Because it's the first X days of the year, so it wouldn't be January 2nd alone. It would be as of January 2nd. That's the second IXL for this. And the last IXL for this is to complete a table and a graph of a linear function. It says complete the table and the graph of the function. So I, I'm going to put my paper up here too. It says f of x equals 3x. And it wants to find f of 1, f of 2, and f of 3. f of 1, f of 2, and f of 3. That means I'm going to put a 1 in for x. So I'm going to copy the original equation and put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to put my input values, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to just do the math. I'm going to get 3, 6. So those are the three numbers that go in. 3, 6, 9. Now it says click to select the points on the graph. So x is 1, 3, 2, 6. Only have to get two points to get a line. Notice that I'm going to get a three is a nine. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And I got it right. Okay. You don't necessarily need to do these on paper if they're the simple multiplication problems. So let's look at the second one. This says f of 2x. That means just take this x and multiply it by two. So I'm going to get two, four, six. 8, 10. I'm going to plot the point 1, 2, and 2, 4. Plot the point 1, 2, 2, 4. Click Submit. So, um, th those were level 1 problems. Level 2 problems, we're going to have to do a little bit more with it. This is take the number, double it, then add 1. Okay, so 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So I'm going to plot 0, 1, and 1, 3. 0, 1, 1, 3. Here's the Stuff, click submit. That was a level two. This is a level three. Um, I'm going to, this is pretty much the same. Take the original number, add five. Zero plus five is five. One plus five is six. Two plus five is seven. Three plus five is eight. Five plus five is ten. Be careful, they didn't go in order on this last one. I'm going to do 0, 5, and 1, 6. 0, 5, 1, 6. I'm going to jump levels until I see something that's different. This is a little different. This says f of x is 1. This means whatever value x is, my y value is 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. 
going to plot 2, 1, and 5, 1. 2, 1, and 5, 1. Click Submit. Um, let's jump a couple more levels. Let's see here. Okay, if you need to use a calculator to do these, go ahead and use a calculator. This says divide the number by negative 2 and then subtract 7. Negative 8 times negative 1 half is positive 4. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. 0 times anything is 0. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. Now, here's the one to check on here. When I plot two points, negative 8, negative 3, negative 6, negative 4, what I should check is that my other points fall on the graph. Is 0, negative 7 on the graph? 0, negative 7 is on the graph. And then 2, negative 8. 2 is, in fact, negative 8. So that is examples of all of the different types of problems. You should be able to do this with no problem and have fun.